The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Tony. Hey, guys. Happy weekend. <laughs> Tony, what's Tony? up, man? Good, good. I've heard you're in uh, Sicily right now. Yes. Oh, nice. It's fantastic. Is it your first time Actually, in Italy? Just... No, I've been to Italy. I've been to Italy before. It's my first time in Sicily. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's 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 beautiful. The food beautiful. must be even fantastic. Yeah, the food the food is amazing. Um, the the wine is is fan I don't drink a lot of wine these days, but when you know when in Rome, I mean, it's it's like you, you can't not <laughs> yeah. can't not drink. I'm about to start smoking cigarettes. <laughs> Just from like watching everybody smoke the cigarettes. Here. It's I like know. they they really know how to really know how to live life. I'm drinking. Actually, I just finished it, but I'm, I've been drinking water from a, a natural spring. They call it like Mount uh, Mount Etna water. So there's there's natural oh, wow. springs here that that you know that run under essentially the volcano. So it's like volcanic water, uh, naturally filtered. Right? It's got a lot of minerals and stuff. So straight um, from the sink, or do you have to go somewhere to get it? Uh, the place where I'm at has has like tapped into the spring, so they have like. No, a yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's good. It's good. That was beautiful. I mean, who knows? Monerotopia 2025. <laughs> <By the volcano>. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were thinking Romania, though, man. I don't know. We got Romania. We got, we got a lot of things on the list. Yeah. yeah I know. But it's kind of crazy because remember what, uh, when we were planning about to do it in uh, Romania, I, I emailed the um, uh, like a bunch of people and nobody replied to me. Like nobody was really interested. They kept saying that they already have activities in the center of the city and blah, blah. And I emailed the city hall, everybody, and <laughs> nobody was interested, unfortunately. Yeah. I have to comment, Tony. I see that you recently you have switched to using uh, Linux for your, your news machine. <laughs> yeah, so no, like I've actually been dual booting. I mean, I usually use Linux. Um, I'm using uh, Manjaro, which I may switch because it's just giving me too much headache right now. <laughs> may use something else. Uh, but on Windows, I've been using Windows because the audio was good in Windows. Now I switched to Linux, and last time I had all the issues with the audio. So should be good today. I don't think I have any videos, maybe one. <laughs> but yeah, I like Linux, just like using the terminal. and It's just nice. Um, yeah, so let's get into the news section, guys. Actually, the first thing that I want to mention is, so if you go to monerotopia.com, go to buy ticket, I will suggest that you get a VIP ticket because it's worth it. You get to go to the dinner with the speakers. Um, then you go add cart. Okay. Then you go view cart. Now, so be <laughs> before you proceed to checkout, so if you go to coupon code, it's that time again. You put Tony24, you apply the coupon, and boom. You gotta get a nice uh, discount to your ticket, twenty four dollars and ninety cents. So uh, make sure to use twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah, it's a good Fantastic. discount. Yeah, guys. Yeah, so uh, make sure you purchase your tickets. So, sorry, go ahead. Thank you. No, th thank you, Tony, for, yeah, I was stressing in the beginning of the show. I mean, the, the conference is really coming along, but the most important thing for us right now is actually selling tickets. So. Greatly appreciate you guys taking action and yeah, go ahead. Please use the uh, Tony to get 10% off. Yeah, I haven't been using Twitter for a long time, but I think I'll be active just to show the conference <laughs> and to post more about it. It's actually like, it's it's an amazing conference. Um, just the fact that you can talk to the speakers, like they hang out next to you. Like I remember how iconic it was at the first Monerotopia, like um, Arctic Mine was behind me just casually listening to other people talk. Um, Seth, for, for privacy, I talked to him for a little bit, and I used to follow him on, on Twitter for quite some time, so that was amazing. Talked to Rachel for a little bit. So it's just like you hang out with all these people. It's not like one of the big conferences that are really expensive, and then they, they're they on the stage, and it's cool. You know, you get to hear them talk live, whatever, and then they go behind the stage, and that's it, and you just hang out with the other people, which like is still really nice, but the fact that, it's one, like, it really feels like a community because you get to talk with everybody, ask them questions, hang out, you know, drink beer with them, and whatever. Um, so it's a really good time. So, you know, as we discussed, we encourage you to buy the VIP tickets. 
it's you know you get to um, uh, go to dinner with the speakers um, and a lot of other stuff. But you know you can get the general admission, or if you're a local, you can get this one. And, you know, so we, we can we can make make it work for you. But yeah, same venue as last year, and uh, it's just gonna be better. Um, I'm actually kind of happy that we're doing the same venue as last year because um, it's just easier to build up on it. And I've heard I wasn't there unfortunately, but I've heard that it was really nice um, with the vendors and everything. So yeah, guys, make yeah, the sure the venue is beautiful. Venue is, is really nice. It's, it's beautiful. really beautiful. So yeah, let's get into the news section now. Uh, the first thing, um, this is really big. So you can actually get now zero KYC XMR to cash in Australia. So uh, previously it was the USA, UK, Europe, Middle East. And now the new edition in Australia. Specifically, you can now access our service in Melbourne, Sydney, and Perth, said um, Tommy from All Arc. So you meet up at a specified location, get the cash, and that's it. No KYC, nothing. So um, yeah, that's amazing. So we pretty much have, you know, the whole world almost covered, which is nice. Um, and so I want to discuss a little bit, actually, um, not yet. Uh, this one is the uh, Havino Rento uh, trades today. As you can see, Monero is trading at a large premium on this non-KYC peer-to-peer exchange. XMR rather wrote, buy some Monero before it's too late. Then we have the um, picture. Wait, t Tony, you got you got to read the super chats. Anybody that super chats, we got to read it. So uh, oh, yeah. short rates. Surfer. Yeah, actually, let me um, yeah, let me get this out on the side. Give me one second. Shortwave is saying he tipped fifteen cents. He's saying I've really enjoyed Linux Mint Debian Debian edition. So there you go. Yeah, give me one second. I'm getting the super chat right now. Um, well, you could just see. It. I'll just post them as you see it. You should be able to see yeah? it now. It's okay. up on the screen. Yeah, awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. I've really enjoyed Linux Mint. Debian. Yeah, I've actually never used Mint. Uh, Shortwave Surfer. I've used um, Ubuntu and Manjaro. I'll, I'll take a look into Mint. I've actually looked. I was looking into it. Thank you, man. Appreciate the tip. Um, now let's go. Yeah. So this is a report from uh, Coin Cards. The breakdown of usage by dollar volume. Um, Bitcoin sitting at twenty eight percent. Then we have XMR at twenty three percent. USDC nineteen. Uh, nobody is really using, I mean, like, uh, like network 2.4%. That's pretty high, actually. Usually, usually it was like 1%, I think. Um, yeah, so like usual, Monero and Bitcoin are bat battling. Um, but actually, wait, well, let's click on this one. Uh, we'll see the discrepancy is lower and lower as it goes on. Yes, like yeah. The difference between the Monero and Bitcoin usage. But on most platforms, actually, Monero is trumping. It is, yeah. I mean, it is. Like <laughs> on a large margin. So, yeah. Um, which actually ties into what I'm going to talk about right now. So this is more price segment, but I'll, I'll relate it to Monero. It's going to make sense. So uh, $2.9 trillion wiped out from stocks this morning due to fears of a global recession. That was on August 2nd, Friday. So um Everything is in the red. Um, all the stocks. Everything. So the worst day since 2020 COVID crash. I need a body fact check on that because I don't believe that. But I've heard like the reason why I didn't read this actually is because I've heard I... all kinds of numbers and all kinds of dates. Yeah, I think that's over sensationalized. But, yeah, because I've heard like it's, I don't know. I, and plus, I've, I've heard lower numbers. Like, I'm not really sure about this number specifically 2.9 trillion. I've heard 1.2 trillion before, and this hasn't been that bad since 2010. I've heard all kinds of stuff, so I'm not going to mention too much about this. It's more of a body. Um, but yeah, so this, then we've heard about uh, Berkshire's cash pile. It's a record. Um, they sold 50% of Apple and they sold a lot of stocks um, and they're just holding cash. So Buffett is just holding a lot of cash, selling stocks. Um, then Okay, so somebody posted on Twitter, Bitcoin is just being dragged down temporarily by Tradify markets, amplified because of increased surface area due to the ETFs. But with M2 on the rise again, it feels like the main event is almost here. And we have a chart, everything is on the red. Paul Janowicz wrote, all those Bitcoin maxi statements feel like 
keep up the Ponzi, guys. It's not about the fucking price. It's about adoption and replacing fiat and not looking for the bigger fool who will buy my packs higher than me. Monero has been the only green coin in market cap 100 while all others crashed. And we have a chart and then I'll relate it to Monero. So uh, this is Bitcoin. And I know some people are listening on Twitter, so I'll be more verbal. But so we have the Bitcoin chart is red. If you're in, so it's a bunch of um, cryptos uh, that are in the red. And there's one small little box, which is green, which is Monero. Um, so my point is that when the market is is um, trending on, on the downside, usually people go to things like gold and things that tend to you know hold up their value. So um, don't count me on this, but I've heard that gold went up as well in the, in the meantime because people are uh, scared of a possible recession, so they're going to gold. But because Monero, we don't base ourselves on the price, uh, and we base ourselves on fundamentals and actually using it as a currency, um, it's actually in the, in the green. And even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't in, in, in the red, it's still one of those um, currencies that hold up the value. And it's been holding its value really, really well uh, just because it's actually used as a currency. And when it's used as a currency, then um, you don't have to be so scared um, holding it because it's not just based off of speculation and price like, like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not, as we most of us know, it's not feasible as a currency actually use for you know for um, purchasing day-to-day -day, um, objects so um yeah again just just kind of proving that um monero is built to actually be usable as a currency then actually i want to bring this up before we get into something else um so i've seen this from the european central bank and the reason why we talked about the digital euro and how they say it's private and it's going to be private but i wanted to bring this one specifically because they said um that the digital euro will be truly private um so this is an article from the ecb.europa.eu and it says many people appreciate privacy when paying and want their data protected current and this is what i want to mention is current electronic means of payment are not optimal in this regard and then they said we're designing the, the digital euro to be the most private electronic payment option and uh yeah so we're going to go over this now but as you read it, it sounds really, really good. Like it sounds like they actually care and it's actually gonna kind of be private. Um, but there's gonna be some backdoor. There's for sure gonna be some backdoor. So they talked about what the digital euro is. Uh, it's a central bank digital currency meant to be called complement cash as a day-to-day -day means of payment. So you can use it between shops, online, between individuals. And then I mentioned how you know you can really uh, purchase stuff online for cash. Which actually, like in, in it, what I like about Romania is that you can actually purchase stuff online using cash, uh, and you can just pay when um, when they ship the product to you. So we have the delivery guy, and then you give them cash, and that's it. And that's how I make my payment payments when I'm in Romania. Actually, I don't use my card; um, I just use cash, which is nice. Um, yeah, but and then they talked about you know using a digital euro offline close to cash so you know say you're um, having dinner with your, with your friend um so essentially they're saying is that you can transfer money only between the two of you or how many friends you're with offline and just the two of you will know about that, that transaction um and <laughs> well i mean in that case i wonder what they will do if we all make private transactions between ourselves so if all the transactions are just essentially, I guess, offline, that's that's cool and nice. But I, I think there is a backdoor for sure um, to this that there's gonna be. Then you know, I mean, they just advertise themselves how how the digital euro is gonna be more private and commercial solutions and and ones. Um, and they're saying how the digital euro identity will be separate from your payment data so that the euro system will process a very limited amount of data. Your bank will pseudonymize your data, which means that your name is not visible to the euro system and is replaced by a random. It's nice, but is it actually going to be like that? Is there going to be a backdoor? And I, I can just imagine myself working in cybersecurity for them or IT or as a programmer and 
programming this thing. And they're like, yeah, just just make sure you um, you make a function so that um, we have a backdoor in this thing. Because <laughs> there's no way that it's just going to be. Or what they may do is that they're going to signal, hey, you can only do small amounts private, like truly offline, like say $50. You know, it's truly offline just between you and somebody else, and that's it. But if it's over 100 or whatever, then they that they want they said they don't they're not going to but i really do see it the the asset sheet on which you detail your assets the car houses watches if you have a rolex uh, paintings you have a picasso whatever in your house you gotta put that in as well um i f i i think that's gonna happen eventually too um so that they, they keep track of everything in the name of um you not money laundering and paying taxes and all those stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this is gonna gonna play out, but I do think that <laughs> there's gonna be restrictions when it comes to your offline payments and th there is gonna be a backdoor eventually. But yeah, but I, I guess the way to revolt would be to, okay, so you're giving us offline payments that are truly private, then we're just gonna make those transactions with everybody and if there's a signal that they know more information than they, sh they should, then that's that's not good. And I think it's going to happen. Now, I think, yeah, let's discuss about this. So this one is interesting. Uh, so we have the U.S. Department of State declaring Edmundo Gonzalez Rutia winner of Venezuela's election over Nicolas Maduro. Um, you got a super right. chat, AKN on tipped ten dollars and nine cents. Congrats to Shortwave. I will purchase your general mission ticket to Bonaerotopia using the Tony discount. Thank you for your service to the Monero community. Uh, congrats to Shortwave. I'll purchase your general admission ticket to Bonaerotopia using the Tony discount. Oh, thank you, AKN. Thank you. Thank you for your service to the Monero community. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Um, also, make sure to you know, like, share, uh, spread the message. It really helps us a lot. So, but we really appreciate you guys doing that me someday. Or, uh, something. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. This basically, you know, this paper talks about how um, Venezuelans, 12 million Venezuelans, peacefully went to the polls. They were, um, you know, they exercised one of the most powerful rights given to people in any democracy, the right to vote. And uh, essentially, they, they, they just, um, um, Venezuela didn't care. And they just said, yeah, Nicolas Maduro again, he's going to be the winner. And it was uh, rightfully so. Uh, but um, I guess that they, they showed that actually more than 80% of the tally sheets um, were directly for Mundo Gonzalez Rutia. And now the U.S. Department of State, which is the thing that's interesting, is uh, that they declared um, Edmundo to be the actual president and not Maduro. And now my question is, why, since when is the U.S. involved in other countries' elections? Um, and also we have to worry about our own, our own elections as well, and them being actually um, valid, because now we have Camela all of a sudden kind of seeming seem like um and what's actually interesting i'm not sure if it's um still a thing now i know i looked up trump and this trump and actually most of the news were just camilla okay i guess not anymore but a couple of days ago i so I, I i looked up trump and most of the searches were i swear just camilla and you can probably look it up on reddit actually that's how i've seen it uh, somebody mentioned it, and then I decided to try it myself. And most of the news coverages were just came out, not, well, like one about Trump. That was really interesting. Um, then, in rela <laughs> um, in relation to the Venezuelan elections, Elon Musk actually. If <laughs> let me know. If the audio, let me know if the audio works. Um, first of all, I mean, is it working? Go ahead and play it. Okay. Could you hear anything? No, I can't. Um, okay. Um, you want me to play it on my side? Well, I, 
I know how to get it to. So what you gotta, or maybe, uh, maybe you're not using the same uh, desktop environment I'm using. Um, yeah, I can pull it up though. Actually, let me try something else. Me if you share your screen, it should give you an option to share the tab instead yes. of the uh, the whole screen. If you share the tab itself, it's able to pipe through the audio. Yep, that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, Colin, call. Uh, yep. Okay, this one. Okay, you guys should be able to see. Uh, let me know if you can hear it now. Hello, Yes. Yes. All okay, right. So all right, so this is <laughs> this is crazy. So uh, the Venezuelan dictator Nicolas Maduro challenged to fight Elon Musk, <laughs> to which he said, "I accept," and he also said that he's gonna chicken out. So let's listen to Nicolas aggressively proposing a fight. Elon Musk, quien se mete conmigo se seca. Quien se mete con Venezuela se seca. Elon Musk, quieres pelea? Vamos a darle Elon Musk. Estoy listo. Soy hijo de Bolívar y de Chávez. No te tengo miedo, Elon Musk. Vamos a darlo, pues. Donde quiera. Como decimos en Caracas, en los barrios. Si tú quieres, yo quiero, Elon Musk. Dilo. So the thing that I'm mostly concerned of is just the, the pure anger in his voice. <laughs> like he really wants to fight. Um, yeah, so to that, so basically, uh, I know people are watching on Twitter as well, but basically he said that, um, okay, Elon Musk, you want to fight? I am the son of a Bolivian. You know, let's have at it, let's fight. And in the most angry voice ever, the dictatorian voice ever. <laughs> so is it going to happen? Musk said that he wants to fight. He accepted the challenge. Last time he was going to fight um, Zuck. And they were going to fight in the Coliseum, but he pulled out. So are we going to see Nicolas Maduro and uh, Elon Musk in the Coliseum? <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Um, so we'll see. Is anybody going to chicken out? Are they actually going to fight? We'll see. Um, and then, actually, I do need to. OK, so this is going to be the last thing that we'll have for the new section for this week. Uh, this one is on uh, Tarka Carlson. Uh, so he said, until I can move country to country with Bitcoin and not be tracked, until I can exercise, that with this currency is less meaningful to me. So he's actually looking into Monero. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to share this tab specifically. And then we'll play this one. And what you can do, you can just keep it on the tab sharing and just every time you switch to a different tab, just click the button at the top. That's, yeah. Actually, that's true. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, right. Okay, so let's play. Uh, Fox Coit wrote on YouTube, Americans are so proud that I'm ashamed to see how they insult other countries. Sorry, what to my words. Hmm. Okay, so let's play this video. I'll just be totally blunt with you, and I'm sure someone's filming this, but I don't really care. Until I can, I don't know, stage a getaway with Bitcoin. I'm serious. Until I can move from country to country with Bitcoin and not be tracked as I do it, as is my inalienable human right. I have the right of free movement as a human being. I have the right of free will as a human being. That was not granted to me by the government. I was born with that. It was bestowed by God. Until I can exercise that with this currency, it's less meaningful to me. The second I can, it will be something I'd lay my life down for because it's the key to my freedom.